Today, I'm gonna to be showing how you can create a moving graffiti effect inside of Premiere Pro. For this effect, you'll need a green screen, Premiere Pro, and a few stock footage assets to use for paint splatters. A little bit later, I'll show you where you can find stock footage assets like these. One of those places, though, is actually the sponsor of today's video, Storyblocks. Storyblocks has a great royalty-free and demand-driven library made up of millions of video assets. You can find everything from high-quality 4K stock footage to Premiere Pro and After Effects templates. I use Storyblocks a lot for their pre-made title animation packs. They have so many great options that allow you to quickly create title animations in Premiere Pro or After Effects. These templates save me a bunch of time when I need to create some type of text or title screen. For a single price per month, you're able to access all of Storyblocks' video, audio, and image assets. Their all-access plan gives you an unlimited amount of downloads. They also have flexible subscription options that let you pay monthly and cancel any time. Storyblocks also has a great initiative that's called Restock. The goal of Restock is to widen the stock industry pipeline by supporting underrepresented communities in front of and behind the camera. Storyblocks is committed to hiring filmmakers who can capture genuine portrayals and experiences of people of different races, ethnicities, religions, sexual orientations, and more. I encourage you guys to check out Storyblocks and I'll leave a link down in the description below with more information. For this effect, I filmed two separate shots. The first one was on a tripod and it was a shot of me running up to a wall and jumping into it. I then cleared the frame so I could get a clean plate. The second shot, I was in front of a green screen and I did the same jump that I did in the first shot. I landed on the green screen and then walked around a bit. This is the part that I used for the graffiti effect. And that was it for the footage, I then brought both of those clips into Premiere. Inside of Premiere, I added both of my clips to a new sequence. I cut the clip of me jumping against the wall into two separate parts. The first part was where I jumped into the wall and I trimmed this clip so that it ends right as I'm hitting the wall and my feet are off the ground. And then the second part was the clean plate. I took the clean plate and stacked it underneath the layer of me jumping against the wall. So now it looks like I disappear once my shoulder hits it. Next I trimmed the layer of me in front of the green screen so it started in the middle of my jump when my feet were off the ground. Then I came into effects and added the ultra key effect to the green screen layer and used the eyedropper to select the green screen to key it out. Then I made a mask around the green screen so you couldn't see anything else outside of it. Next I stacked the green screen layer on top of the clean plate and made sure to slide it over so it started right as the shot of me jumping against the wall ended. Then I needed to match up the size of my body in both of the shots. So an easy way to do this was to drag the shot of me jumping against the wall up one video track and then extended it a few frames over the green screen layer. Then I dropped the opacity of this layer a little bit so I can see the green screen shot underneath. Then I rescaled and positioned that green screen layer to match as close as possible to the first shot. Make sure while you're filming your effect that you jump in exactly the same way for both shots. This way it's a more seamless transition when you jump cut between them. I did a few takes of my jumps so that I had a few options to choose from. After that I brought the opacity back up to 100% on this layer and positioned it back to where it was. Now you see up here how the sky was changing while I cut between the two clips? An easy way that I fixed this was to duplicate my clean plate layer by selecting it, holding down Alt, and dragging it up to the top of all the layers. Then I made sure I was at the beginning of that duplicated clean plate layer, right clicked on it, and selected Add Frame Hold. Next I created a mask around the sky and the parking lot over to the side. Now the sky is actually a freeze frame for the entire clip and won't change when the clips cut. After that I went into effects and searched for the threshold effect and added that to the green screen layer and this is what's going to create the graffiti look. Then under the opacity tab on this layer, I changed the blend mode to darken and dropped the opacity to 60%. I also came down to the threshold effect and adjusted the level slider until I got the look that I wanted. Next I needed to add in some paint burst and splatter effects. So for one of these I actually used a blood burst effect that I found on Storyblocks and it was on a green background. I brought that into Premiere and keyed out the green by using Ultra Key. Then I added the tint effect to this and changed the map white to black. Now that burst looks like black paint instead of blood. After that I stacked this burst effect on top of all the layers and made sure it started at the same time as the green screen layer. This burst effect was in slow motion, so I right clicked it, went to speed and duration, and changed the speed to 1000%. Depending on what burst effect you use, and if it's in slow motion or not, you might not need to adjust the speed. 
Next, I scaled and positioned the burst effect to where I wanted it. Then I added the directional blur effect to this and changed the direction to 90 degrees and the blur length to two. I had to do this because there was no motion blur since it was filmed in super slow motion. I also created an ellipse mask around this effect and increased the feather to 65. I did this to contain the burst a little bit so that it wasn't splattering so far away. After that, I added some paint splatters and drips to the wall. I used another element from Storyblocks for this and it was of an image called Grunge Splash. I also used an element from a site called Jing.fm which has free stock clip art. I downloaded a paint splatter image with some drips on it. There are multiple places where you can find similar paint effects like this. And remember, you can also use blood splatters and just tint them black like I did earlier. So next, I brought in the grunge splash image from Storyblocks and layered it on top of everything and made sure it started at the same time as the green screen layer. My image had a white background. So to get rid of this, I added the color key effect and used the eyedropper to select the white. Then I increased the color tolerance level all the way up. After that, I added the tint effect to this and tinted it black. Then I adjusted the position, scale, and rotation so that it was where I wanted it on the wall. I also created a mask around the splatter to get rid of this big ink blob here. I then keyframed the mask by selecting the stopwatch for the mask path. I did this at the beginning of the layer and brought the mask size down to where you couldn't see the splatter. Then went forward about 5 frames and expanded the mask. This gives it the look like the paint is splattering on the wall. I also increased the feather on this mask to 50. Then I duplicated this grunge splash a few times and switched up the rotation, scale, and position on those duplicated layers. I moved them around the wall to fill it out a bit more. I ended up doing this about three or four times. I also added in the image of the drips and did the same thing. I ended up using the same drip element twice and just adjusted the rotation and the mask so that it didn't look too similar. To get this drip look on the one at the bottom, I increased the space in between the keyframes on the mask for when it's expanding. I had them 32 frames apart from each other and this felt like the perfect speed to simulate the paint dripping down the wall. Then the last thing I did was add in some fake handheld camera movement. I went over how to easily do this in my 5FX and Premiere Pro video, I'll leave a link down in the description below for that. But alright guys, that's it for the effect. I think it turned out pretty good and I like how you can create all of this just inside of Premiere. So I hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. If you did, consider liking the video and subscribing for more just like this. That's it for today though, take care and I'll see you in the next one.